You're already clapping. You're already clapping. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Houston's own internationally acclaimed two-time author and motivational speaker extraordinaire. Give it up for the host of the Brandon Hope Show. It's Brandon Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, stand on your feet. Multi-platinum recording artist, a.k.a. the mad stuntman from Real to Real, here to perform his hit single, iconic, legendary song, I Like to Move It, Move It. Come on, everyone, stand on your feet. Let's get this party started. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the original mad stuntman from Real to Real, and Brandon wants you to. That's right. Live. On the Brandon Hawk Show. I like the moment, moment. I like the moment, moment. I like the moment, moment. You're like the. I like the moment, moment. I like the moment, moment. I like the moment, moment. You're like the. All girls all over the world. Original man, stunt man, for the kiss man. I love how all girls that move them body. And when you move your body. Want to move it nice and sweet and sexy, all right? Come on, the girl. Are you done? You know me. A couple rich and a good money. You want big man, but a woman in the house. Are you done? You know me. A couple rich and a good money. You want big man, but a woman in the Caliphate. In the Caliphate. In the Caliph. In the Caliph. In the Caliph. Woman in the Caliphate. In the Caliphate. In the Caliph. In the Caliph. In the Caliph. Woman in nice, sweet, fantastic. In the body, go to the top of the tide. In the woman in nice, sweet, and in the top of the tide. In the body, go to the top of the tide. In the woman in nice. Thank you. All my fans, all my beautiful ladies with no makeup on, this song is for you. Your natural beauty. No makeup, baby. Woo, you're driving us men crazy. You're driving us men mud up. Hey, hey. Susan hey. Jackson, the owner of the Sushi Foot Bar, the author of the book Dirty Secrets. Catch me on the Brandon Hope Show on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Hey everybody, we are here with author and owner of the Sushi Foot Bar, the one and only Miss Susan Jackson. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brandon. I appreciate it. The Sushi Foot Bar. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I like sushi, so what kind of fish do they have? And then Foot Bar, so I'm assuming I'm going to get a massage and I'm eating sushi at the same time. Am I, am I on the right? <laughs> What is the Sushi Foot Bar? Well, what made me come up with the name the Sushi Foot Bar was because it was attractive and people would think that they would eat. So when people are attracted to food, we all like to eat. Mm -hmm. So I figured, okay, we can get them in by saying sushi. Mm -hmm. And if we throw that foot bar in there, mm -hmm. they'll say, well, wait a minute. Am I going to be putting my foot up on the bar to eat sushi <laughs> or is this going to be something else? 
And what I do is I use essential oils to do reflexology and also oh, So how is your business different? Well, most other, well, actually a lot of other foot massage places offer pedicures okay. and manicures. Mm -hmm. What I'm offering is actual deep tissue massage and I'm offering holistic prevention mm -hmm. for disease. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that we deal with diabetes, mm -hmm. we deal with lupus, we deal with cancer, and we deal with a lot of major illnesses that are going around now and that are more prevalent now than they have been in the past. What makes mine different is the fact that with reflexology, I actually will be focusing mm. on the bottom of the feet. Mm. And because of the, on the bottom of the feet, and what people don't understand is that your feet are like tires on a car. Mm. They move you around. Okay. Your feet move you around. Mm -hmm. And when you have disruption or any type of blockage in your energy centers, it makes your body dis-ease. So this is holistic. This is healing. This particular practice has been around for a long time. How long is a typical session? A typical session would be one hour. Okay. So I'm, I'm starting off with one hour sessions and I'm also going with 30 minute sessions. I'm also going with 15 minute sessions as well. So if I want to book an appointment and somebody's watching, they want to contact you today. Way to so do that. you would contact www.thesushifootbar.com. You would also contact me on Facebook, The Sushi Foot Bar LLC. That's also on Facebook as well. Call out the handle, Susan. And I'm also with the Chamber <laughs> of Commerce as well under The Sushi Foot Bar in Lancaster, an Antelope Valley uh, Chamber of Commerce chapter. And Instagram. And Instagram. At? The Sushi Foot Bar. What's next? What's next is me franchising the business, mm -hmm. moving it over into Tokyo, oh. moving it over into London, moving it over to Miami, New York, and having it as a worldwide mm -hmm. product, as a worldwide business, as a worldwide something where people will be willing to go ahead and use holistic medicine and use prevent preventative medicine as well. Um, what I also do is not just massage the feet and do the reflexology, but I also make foot jewels. Wow. And these foot That's jewels, cool. these are particular, these are considered crystals. Hmm. And what these are is like amethyst crystals. And with amethyst crystals, this is basically becoming one with earth. And so how does this work? So, so a lady would, would put, put this, this on her she ankle? She put this around. She would step into this part. Right okay. Here. She would step into this part. All right. And the toe would go, it would stretch across now the that's foot. that's cool. Everybody, make sure you get one of these today, but you are also an author. Sage Dupree, Dirty Secrets, book one. So, Dirty Secrets, book one, is basically about a young man who was biracial, and he wanted to be a musician. He wanted to be a singer, and he was great at what he did. However, during this struggle of him making it to the music industry, he was molested by his aunt. So we went through him going through the molestation at a young age, and it not just started from the age of nine, mm. but it went in until he was 13. He didn't tell any of his family because he was afraid that they would, <clears throat> he was afraid that they would, you know, ostracize him. And being that he lived on a Native American reservation, it mm. made it a lot harder for him to even be believed. So he pursued his music career he dealt with the struggle of being molested, mm. but he kept all of that inside. And how can someone order your book? This can be ordered through Book Baby. So you can go through Book Baby. It's also available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Mm. And um, you can also reach out to me, Sage Dupree, <laughs> on Instagram. You can also reach out on Dirty Secrets, Facebook as well. Congratulations. Okay. Now, this is... Gentlemen, the man himself is in the house. His name is the Mad Stunt Man, aka Mark Quashi, all the way from South Florida. Mark, welcome to the show. Brenda likes to move it, move it. <laughs> Brenda likes to move it, move it. Brenda likes to move it, move it. He likes to move it. Come on, yes. man. That's morning, what I'm talking morning, about. That, that's I'll what do. I'm. That's what I'm talking about, Mark. I'm doing wonderful. Appreciate you coming on the show icon legend glad to have you thank you so much for having me mark you've been in the music industry for a long time i recall all the way back in 1994 when your 
trademark iconic song dropped. I like to move it, move it. Where did that idea come from to write that song? The idea came up from me being a teenager on the streets of Flatbush, Brooklyn. Big up to Flatbush, Brooklyn, where I grew <laughs> up. Um, I originated from Trinidad. I came up to United States in 1978, June 14, 1978. I was 10 years old. You know, we reside first on Park Place in Brooklyn, then Underhill. Then we moved to Flatbush and 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 Woodruff Avenue, and then the main Lennox Road between Bedford and Flatbush is where I grew up. So in the years being age 16. I started getting into music. I started mm. liking a lot of reggae music. Being from Trinidad, we we listened to a lot of calypso and soca music, you know. But mm. being in the United States, you get to hear hip hop, mm. R and B, uh, soca music, reggae music, and and the reggae music is what I was generated into because I was growing up with my friends from Jamaica. You know, I didn't understand the Jamaican language, so I had a friend living next door from Jamaica. So I was asking him, what, what do you mean, how you speak? Because, you know, they got that Jamaican broken language. They would talk, you know, and that's how it all started for me. I had was to learn how to speak like a Jamaican, first of all. If I'm going <laughs> to sing like them, I need to learn how to speak like them and understand the words. Fast forward from being 16 to age 27, when I finally met Eric Morello. Mm. Eric Morello, he's a producer from Colombia. Uh, he used to live in New Jersey. I was introduced to him by another artist. His name is El General. He's from Panama. They call him El General. That's what mm. they call him in Spanish. And he introduced me to Eric Morello. He said, Stuntman, I have a number for you to call. Call this producer. He's looking for artists. So mm. he gave me the number. And at the time, from Brooklyn to New Jersey, it cost $2 to put in the phone booth. At that time, that was a lot of money for me right. because my second hobby was cooking. I could have mm. used that $2 and go and went and buy some chicken and cook it and sell it to the neighborhood barbershops <laughs> and make money that way. That was a quicker thing for me. Right. So I, and then he came back around again. He said, Stuntman, did you call Eric Morello? I said, no, I didn't call him. I said, I'm going to call him now. I finally made the phone call, called Eric Morello. Eric Morello invited me to his home in New Jersey uh, when I got there, he was in, the, in his mother's basement with a big studio. Um, he was playing house music in there. And I said, Eric, I always wanted to do my Jamaican style over some dance music. Mm. So he said, really? Go into the booth. Let me see what you got. So when I went into the booth, I started rapping, 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 doing my Jamaican style. And, and, and he loved it. When I came out of the booth, he said, I want to sign you. I said, wow, okay. That time I had no lawyers, nothing. I was hungry. I was like, wanted a way out. I was, I just wanted to, I just wanted to be famous one day. Mm. So I finally got my break from Eric Morello. Mm. The first song we did was Go On Move. That song was more underground, you know? Um, go on, move, make <laughs> your body groove, 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 groove. Dum, 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 I'm just playing the instruments with my mouth. Right, right, so, right. So the second time around, um, Eric created this beat. We'll say, we'll call it now that I like to move it beat. He created that beat. He said, Stuntman, I want you to come and write something for this song, for this beat right here. I said, okay. I like how it's grooving. He said, because I did go on move, I was looking for another hook mm. to, to catch for this song. You know, so he said, stop, man, you can add words. If you if you get a hook, you can also add words to the song. So I said, all right, cool. So I already had an old song that I had wrote back in the day, being a teenager. And 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 um, the hook just automatically came to me. I was like, I like to move it, move it. I like to move. But I was doing it in my regular voice. I like to move it, move it. Eric was like. Keep doing it over and over, over and over. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Then he was like, why don't you sing it in that deep Cookie Monster voice you got? We all started laughing because he said Cookie Monster voice. So I was like, okay. I was like, I like to move it, move it. I like over and over, over and over. Then he chopped it up. He chopped it up. He said, come out of the booth. I want you to hear this. So when he played it, it was only, I like to move it, move it. He's like, we need something. We need to answer back this call. 
Mm. So he went in the booth with two of his friends and, he, and they said, move it. That was mm. the answer back, move it. <laughs> right? And then I was listening to it again and then I started writing the words. Mm. I was like, woman, you're cute and you don't need no me. Couple of regen are cute. He said, you know, you can sing it. He's, you, you can sing it faster and you can also, you can also repeat. You don't have to say all of the words and write out all the words. He said, you can repeat it. So I said, really? You can do that? I was like, okay. Woman, you're cute. How you don't need no me? A cup of regen are cute, buddy. You want me mad, but a woman, you're cute. How you don't need no me? A cup. Exaggerate the women mm. being beautiful without any makeup on. The mm. song is a women's anthem of their natural beauty. Woman, you're cute. You don't need no makeup, original cute body. You mm. will make my mother. Mm. You will make us man crazy for you with your natural body. That's what the song is for. And I like to move it. Move it is when you chasing behind a girl, you trying to talk to her. You know, mm. that's where I like to move it. Move it part came in for that. I knew of your song when I was playing basketball. I remember going through the layup line, playing football. I like to move it, move. And, and man, we're talking about almost 25, 30 years ago. And still today, my children, how does that impact you to this day? Hearing your songs in NBA stadiums, NFL games, in the Olympics. Wow. You know, I, I totally, I told tears came out of my eyes. Tears came out of my eyes to see the world uh, developing of this song that I sang 27 years ago mm. at age 27. We had no idea that the song would have took off the way it did. It sold over 3 million copies in 1994. Oh. Um, I traveled, I traveled the world, you know, it, it, it's amazing to see people gravitating to the song and mm. love it so much and just, learning how to speak English of the song. I remember I was traveling to Russia and I was on the plane and, and everyone knew who, who I were on the plane. Mm. And the Russian woman said, I'm happy for your song. Your song taught my husband how to speak English. And the impact of that made me feel proud. Did you ever let the success get to your head? No, that's one thing I didn't do. I was humble, very humble. I know what I had to do as an artist. You have to focus on how to do interviews. Make, sh make sure that when you tell a story, the same story with different impacts. Mm. You know, you could tell the same story, but you could say it differently each time you do a, an interview with anyone out there. Magazines or TV, you know, you gotta be humble. As an artist, you got to follow your dream and stay consistent. If you want it, you got to go get it. Hmm. It's not going to come your way. Because and there's always somebody out there to hear you. There's someone outside that will help you. Once they know that you have a goal, they will introduce you to someone. And you always got to be humble with respect. You definitely got to stay in school if you want to learn how to, to count those numbers. You know, I made a lot of money. I used to have three limousines outside my apartment. Three limousines not moving from on Lennox and Flatbush. Not moving. The, 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 the limousine drivers would take shifts. They would take shifts because I would keep them out there all day, all week entertaining my friends. But as you grow older, you got to remember to save your money. I remember Eric Morello say, stuntman, don't spend all your money. There's going to be a rainy day that you need that money. Mm. I didn't listen to him. I was spending, spending, spending. And, and, and slowly and slowly, the money started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, I had a great time traveling, doing shows, making money. I love about the fans. They supportive. And artists got to always remember your fans after God. God first. You have your fans. They the one that go out. And, and buy your CD, buy your record, mm. buy your, your, your digital music. They go out there and spend their hard earned money. So in respect to them, you should give them a hug. You should shake their hand. You should, you, you should be happy. All the money that you, you're posting up and going like this on 
on the new generation now that they they do with the money stuff i'm not hating nobody for doing that but what i'm trying to tell them is remember someone went out and buy a song mm. working hard hearing your song on the radio loving you liking you and going out and spending their money on you your gratitude your return you are owed to your fans hey. for life the paparazzi gonna be always be in your face you can't fan them off because you you tired of them they're gonna be always in your face and that's what i love i want them to keep noticing me mm. i would never fan my fans and 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 paparazzi and anybody that want to embrace me okay this is the new generation where we got to wear masks embrace me with your mask I'm going to hug you. I'm going to have time to shake your hand and thank you for supporting my record because mm. the first time I got this record right here, this is my first, first oh. gold record I got from the Netherlands, Holland. And wow, I cried because I worked so hard for this. I worked so hard for the respect of the fans. And the supporters and the DJs, you got to respect the DJs. If the DJs ask you for a drop, give them a drop. Everything mm. is not about money. If you love what you do when you're singing, it's not about money. Come it's on, about man. the music that you, that, 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 that you love to give. And great things going to happen for you. Mm. There's so much positive things in music that you can focus on. Most people focus on the negative stuff. I'm not going to focus on the negative stuff. Mm. The my greatest, my greatest, besides this goal, my my greatest, my greatest platinum goes to my fans. They are my platinum fans. Remember, I said they are my platinum fans. This is meaning they're higher than gold. They go out and support our mm. music. If they didn't like it, they're not gonna buy it. If they like it, they're gonna support you. So you always got to give the fans what they want. When they see you at the concert, all they want to do is embrace you. I mean, some of them is, you know, you don't know the intention that they got, so they got the security. I understand that. But remember, they go out and buy your music. Mm. In mm. order for you to be counting them dollars in the bank or counting it on, on the screen and going like this, remember your fans. Without your fans, you have no money to count. Yeah. Woo! Come on, y'all. I want y'all to jump up and down. All this pandemic stuff you want to shake away. Shake away the COVID. Come on. Get up. Stand up. Get up. Stop my say, let me see you jump. 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 Woo! I want to see everybody bouncing up and down, but right now I want to see the girls dance in slow motion. Slow motion, now me say slow motion. Slow motion, now me say slow motion. I command you to dance in slow motion. We command you to dance in slow motion. Get the general leave me and the man stunt man. Get the general leave me and the man stunt man. Official DJ DMC in a action. Official DJ DMC in a action. What? Hey, Kid G, General Levy. Right now, it's General Levy gonna make you close your eyes and jump. You close your eyes and jump. 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 Stop passing. Stop passing. Stop passing. Stop passing. Come on. Woo! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Get used to this one. General, leave me with a wicked fast man style. So, Mark, what difference do you see with today's entertainers opposed to 20, 30 years ago? 
<laughs> it's funny that you say that today's entertainers, the younger generation, they flashy, they, they, they show money up on the screen. Hey, I got this, I got that. Look, 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 look. That's all good. It's all good. But if you're going to do that, be smart. There's somebody behind your fans that's happy for you. Somebody behind them saying, hmm, okay, mm. he got all that money. Okay, let's find out where they live. You know, mm. not everything you got to show where you live, where you live is supposed to be a fortress. Nobody's supposed to come there. And all the friends you have that you think is your friends, don't have your friends at your house. Mm. Don't ever bring them at your house. Hmm. Ever. Because somebody going to come back and rob you. You're not going to know who. Because you have so much people in your house and they're looking and they're scheming. Some of them going to ask you for a glass of water. Hey, okay, man, can I get a glass of water? Let's give them time to scheme and see where you have your cameras, where everything like that. You know, you got to be mindful and got to be thinkful. This is for the younger generation and our generation at, at this age because we acting like the young generation. You know, we want to show money. You can show everything that you got. Hey, you have a good song. I'm different. I'm not going to flash money up on the screen. I'm not going to do that. You know, I had a, I had a video where I did a song and I had a little bit, a little bit of hundred dollars where, where, where the girls would go shopping because this is a song that called Conway. The girls like to go shopping. So I showed them a little bit of money, but not a big stack of money like that. You know, I love to see the videos, but then I start thinking, I hope this guy is really protecting himself because you never know who's who. So, Mark, COVID-19, the pandemic, how has that impacted your career during the last year and a half? Shattered everything, shattered everyone. It took away a lot of shows. It took away a lot of shows. Everybody was, was panicking. You know, you got to wear a mask because of COVID. You don't want to catch it, anything. How do you feel? Are you ready to get back out there? I'm ready to get back out. Do you know? Um, I'm going to say this. I had COVID. I had COVID, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't really, it wasn't nice. You know, I didn't believe that I would have caught it, mm -hmm. but, you know, I caught it. Couldn't taste, couldn't walk, body mm -hmm. aching, pain, and everything. But mm -hmm. thank God I'm through it now, you know, and uh, I, I don't want to ever catch that. Thing. How do you follow a hit song? Are you still trying to outdo I like to move it, move it? You know, <laughs> that song, that song, That's I like a to move it, move it. You can't follow that song because you're going to run yourself into a tree. You mm. know, you can't follow what you already did and what you already create. Any new projects coming out? I have brand new music as the mad stuntman, not real to real. Real to real only come under the umbrella of I like to move it, move it when they book me. But the mad stuntman, you want to book the mad stuntman. I got a brand new single called Stuntman Says, just released last week. So stuntman, talk to somebody real quick who's on their way. They see a vision. They got a goal. They know where they're trying to get to. Obstacles, one after the next, keeps knocking them back. Right now, it's a new generation, a new generation. You can put your own music out there. Um, you can put your, you can do your own thing, um, go up on the internet, promote, 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 promote yourself, give people your music, let somebody hear it, let them share it, and just do what you need to do and focus on your music, focus on your goal that you know you want to be mm. one day, you want to be this person someday. You got to respect your parents, first of all. You're growing up with your mother, whether it's your mother or your father, or both of them together. Respect your parents. I see a lot of kids want to get into music and they're not respecting their parents. You have to respect the people that brought you here and respect your mother because I grew up in respect. I grew up with 12 siblings and my mom, she worked hard as a single mother and, and she, she married my stepfather and he was there for us and he, he supported us all the way. It's respect. Respect and always stay humble and always smile. Learn how to save your money for a rainy day. On the Brandon Holt Show, Mark, man, from my heart to yours, I really appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brandon, man. I'm ready to perform, man.
Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our final performance from the Mad Stunt Man. Here to perform his hit song, AKA, It's Your Birthday. If it's your birthday, stand on your feet, share the feed. Guess what? This is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're celebrating the birthday yesterday, and you're celebrating the birthday today, and you're definitely celebrating the birthday tomorrow, this song is for you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Woo! It's your birthday. Come on, ladies. Happy, 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 happy birthday. It's your birthday. I'm singing to the ladies now. How old are you? How old are you now? After your wish, you can blow out your candle. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Come on, y'all. It's your birthday. Come on. Happy, 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 happy birthday. It's your birthday. We got Asia Rex on the steels. Come on. Happy birthday. Come on, come on. Put your hands up. Come on, come on. Thank you. <laughs>